Okay, question six, leak code, zigzag conversion. The string PayPal is hiring is written in a zigzag pattern on a given number of rows like this. You may want to display this pattern in a fixed font for better legibility and then read line by line. So we have P-A-H-N, et cetera, et cetera. So we need to convert this string into this. So going down, zigzag, down, zigzag. So initially, this seems like a very complex question, but if you just think about it as an elevator of sorts, where you're just going down then up as opposed to diagonal, then we can create some kind of array to store these values and then just have a true value for going down and a false value for going up. So let's jump into the explanation. So we're gonna have some kind of direction flag. When it's true, it's gonna go downwards when it's false, it's gonna go upwards, right? So we're gonna have some kind of array to store our results. So we can have array. And the hard part here is we need to initialize the array with something that would separate three different zones. We need to separate here, here, and here. We could use arrays for these. So each one would be an array. The only issue with that is the space complexity. And then at the end, we're gonna to have to join this. So we could use reduce or map and it just becomes quite complex in terms of time. Or we could just use three different strings. So for this, we have num rows is equal to three. So we could just have the array initialized with the number of rows as strings. So it looks something like this. We also need a count variable, which we'll put up here. And this can be initially set as zero. And this is what's going to determine when we need to flip the direction flag. So say the direction flag is true. Once we reach this value here, so this is two. So once count reaches two, we then flip the flag and turn it to false. And then we go back up. So let's, let's run through this example. So we're gonna loop through this string, right? So we start off at P, we add P to the array at count of zero. So P goes in here, we check if count is equal to zero or count is greater than or equal to nums at row minus one, because that's gonna give us two, and that is this value here. Once that happens, we turn back. At this moment, we're gonna go forward. So we move over to the next one. So we increment count here, so count goes to one, direction is now set to true, and we move over to A. A is at one, so we push R into count at one, so that's going to be A goes in here. We check if count is greater than or equal to nums row minus one. It's not, so we increment count because direction is true. Then we move on to the next one, Y. We add Y into array at two. We check if count, which is at two now, is equal to nums row minus one, it is. So we change direction. So we go to false. Now when direction is false, we just decrement count. So count goes to one. Now we're on P. P is added at R count. We check if count is equal to nums at row minus one or count is equal to zero. It's not, so we can decrement count and move along. We're at A. A can be added to R at count zero. We check if count is equal to zero, it is. So direction is changed to true. Then we increment count back to one. L is added here, so R at one. We check, there's nothing to change here. We increment count and we move along. We add I in here. We do the check, count is equal to nums at row minus one. So we flip again, so this becomes false. We decrement count, we move to S, we add S in here. We do a check, nothing changes. We decrement count, we go to H, H is added here. We do the check, we need to convert direction to true, and we increment count. Move over to I, I is added in here. So I'll put this under here, because we're running out of space. We do the check, nothing to change. We add to the count, we move over to R. R is added here, we do the check. Count is equal to nums at row minus one. We change direction to false, and then we decrement the count to one. So we move to I, I goes here. We do the check, nothing to change. We, in we decrement count. We move over to n, n is added in here. Count is equal to zero, so we need to change the direction, so direction goes to true. Count is incremented to one, and then we go to g, and g is added in here, and then we finish the loop. So after this is done, we just need to join this array to form a string. So if we join it with r.join, we are going to get p a, which is the answer we're looking for.
Now in terms of time and space complexity, we have one loop which is going over this string. So time complexity is O of N and space complexity is also O of N where we're storing all of the values of the string within an array. So firstly, let's have a look at the constraints, see if we have any edge cases we need to handle. We do, so if num rows is equal to one or s dot length is less than num rows, return s. So if nums at rows, if the number of rows is equal to one, well, then there's only going to be one string, right? And then if s dot length, if the string length is less than the number of rows, well, we aren't going to be able to create that number of rows that they're looking for. So we can just return string. So we need the direction flag. We need the count. And we need to create that array. We populate it with num rows, and we're going to fill each one of those with an empty string. Now we loop through the string. Let's extract the current value to make it a bit easier to read. So firstly, we need to add current to the string at count. So it's going to be R at zero. And if count is equal to zero or count is greater than or equal to num rows minus one, we need to change the direction. And this is really important because at this moment in time, direction is false. So we need to convert that to true because we've added into the array now the current value. We need to convert this to true. If we set it at true to begin with, what's going to happen is we're going to meet this if condition right here, and then it's going to flip it. And that direction is going to become false. And then we can go to minus one. So we don't want that. So we need to initially set direction to false. That way, when this converts, it's going to set to true and it's going to trigger this chain of events. And the last thing to do within this for loop is to check whether direction is true or false. If it's true, increment count. If it's not, decrement count. So very similar to an elevator, right? So going up and down. Forget about the diagonals, just simplify it to up and down. And then we can return r.join and that'll convert it into a string. Let's give this a go. Submit it. And there you have it. 